It was the early 2000s, and one of the most extraordinary scientific feats took place. We mapped the human genome. The genome was cracked. We've got 23,000 genes, it turns out, much less than a grape, but more than a chicken. <laughs> Only 2% of our genetic material actually codes for proteins that sustain life. The rest of it, much of it, still remains a mystery. An extraordinary truth though was uncovered in this journey of mapping the genome. We had anticipated that we would learn the cause of all chronic disease when this mapping happened. We anticipated that maybe it was one gene, one disease, or at most a few genes causing a disease, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, etc., and that mapping the human genome would crack this code and we would resolve the epidemic of chronic diseases. Unfortunately, it was quickly revealed to us that that is absolutely not the case, and chronic diseases are multifactorial and far more complex. This turned our attention from the genes, from blaming nature, if you will, to looking at what regulates gene expression, blaming nurture, if you will. And this exploded forward the science of epigenetics. What is epigenetics? Epi is above, the genetics is our genetic material. So these are the hundreds of biochemical phenomena happening that influence what genes are turned on and what genes are turned off. Why is a liver cell a liver cell and a skin cell or a brain cell a brain cell? All of the DNA containing cells have the exact same DNA. Yet a liver cell is clearly so much different than a nail cell or a hair cell. Epigenetics, and in particular, something called DNA methylation, is the heavy player between the difference of a liver cell and a skin cell. Extraordinarily, science is suggesting that aging itself happens in the epigenome. So root cause aging is changes to gene regulation. And specifically, one of the heavy lifters is something called DNA methylation. So this is a potent regulator of uh, which genes are on and which genes are off, and science is suggesting that DNA methylation is a key player in the epigenetic aging phenomena. I wanna tell you a little bit about methylation more broadly, and then we'll talk specifically about DNA methylation. Recall from high school chemistry, a methyl group. Uh, it's a very simple molecule, really one of the most simple molecules in nature. It's a carbon surrounded by three hydrogens. We are putting methyl groups on and off of different compounds in the body all of the time. The way we do this is through something called S-adenosyl methionine. I know it's a big, you know, $5 word, but this is the molecule that brings that carbon and three hydrogens to all of the various reactions that require a methyl group. So methylation is happening in every cell of the body all of the time. Here's an example of a methylation reaction where S-adenosyl methionine is donating a carbon and three hydrogens to turn off adrenaline. So we've got an active adrenaline molecule. I actually have a lot of them active right now, and my body is going to uh, quickly shut them down by putting a methyl group on them and rendering my adrenaline inactive. So that's a key cornerstone way that we use methylation. The process of making S-adenosyl methionine is very nutrient dense. Take a look at this figure. On the left-hand side, you can see the number of nutrients involved. If you've ever wondered why B12 is essential, why folate is essential, why you need to make sure that you're eating your eggs or your egg yolks for the choline, it's because that they are key essential players in making S-adenosyl methionine and keeping methylation happening. Methylation, that carbon in three hydrogens, is as fundamental to life as oxygen is to breathing. If we are not methylating, we simply can't survive. Methylation is required to make DNA, to repair DNA, and to regulate DNA expression. We evolved making the methylation reaction so foundational to life. It, it's actually extraordinary to me whenever I say those three things, 
repair DNA, synthesize DNA, and then regulate DNA expression. It's just extraordinary. Methylation is involved in immune cell differentiation. Uh, we make and metabolize neurotransmitters such as adrenaline, but also dopamine, acetylcholine for memory and for muscle contraction. Uh, we use methylation to clear out histamine. If any of us have suffered from allergies, you know you wanna be metabolizing that as quickly as possible. We use methylation to transform estrogen and metabolize and detox estrogen, as well as compounds like mercury and lead or arsenic. Methylation is activating phospholipids in the cell membrane. It's involved in the myel myelination of peripheral nerves. It's just difficult to underscore how important this incredible and simple molecule is. Let's drill down a little bit into DNA methylation. In the upper left corner, you can see a chromosome. As that chromosome unwinds, it reveals the exquisitely uh, extraordinary structure that is DNA. First, you can see that they're wrapped around those blue balls. Those are histones. Histones are proteins uh, that enable the DNA to be wound tightly. Just to give you context, in a single cell, there's about two meters of DNA end to end. And if you actually wound out all of the DNA in our body, it would lap the solar system twice. So there has to be an exquisitely sophisticated sort of packing organization to DNA to allow that much information to be contained in such a small uh, container. So it's wrapped very particular. Uh, so again, a chromosome unwinds and it reveals the histones. When histones are grouped together, that group is called a nucleosome. Now at any step from chromosome to nucleosome to histones to the DNA itself, there are various epigenetic regulators that can get in there and influence what genes are on and what genes are off. So when you get down to the double-stranded helix, when you get down to DNA being fully unwound, you can drill down and look at specific genes. Remember, we have 23,000 of them. Now, the promoter region of a, of a given gene is where we regulate it being allowed to be turned on or it being inhibited and off. And this is where DNA methylation is really working. Uh, when there are a lot of methyl groups on a promoter region of DNA, that gene is inhibited. It's not allowed to be expressed. In fact, in the scientific literature, if you pull up a, a paper on it, you'll often see DNA methylation, the methyl groups denoted as red lollipops. Transcription is not able to happen. So that protein that would land on the DNA and turn it on to be expressed can't happen because of all these red lollipops that are in the way. Conversely, if there's an absence of red lollipops, transcription is able to readily happen, the gene can be turned on, uh, and that protein can then be built. All right, let's drill down a little bit more. Just kind of bear with me. I know this is a little bit geeky, but honestly, I think it's kind of cool, and hopefully you will too. So let's recall DNA, four bases, cytosine, guanine, uh, adenine, and thymine. Now, cytosine is the base that receives the methyl group and specifically at its fifth carbon position. So cytosine, when it's next to guanine, uh, they're connected by a phosphate. So if you read more about DNA methylation, you'll often see it referred to as CPG. That's cytosine, phosphate, guanine. And again, on that fifth position of cytosine, there sits a methyl group. Recall that I said that there are hundreds of different uh, methyl transferase enzymes in the body. DNA has its own family of methyl transferases that add methyl groups to cytosine at different time points in the life of a strand of DNA. So what you're seeing here in this figure is cytosine getting methylated. And there in that reaction is DNA methyltransferase and the S adenosyl methionine donating that carbon and three hydrogens, that methyl group, to the cytosine, turning cytosine into methyl cytosine. There are a number of different types of DNA methylation. Hypomethylation means that on that promoter region, there are very few red lollipops or no red lollipops, and that gene can be expressed. It can be turned on should the body need it. Hypermethylation, on the other hand, it, the promoter region is dotted with those red lollipops. That gene cannot be transcribed. It cannot be uh, turned on. 
There's also demethylation. So the red lollipops can actively be removed. There's a whole family of enzymes uh, that are doing this as the body demands. This is called active demethylation. There's also passive demethylation. So during cell division, recall that DNA is also reproduced. During that process of reproduction, the uh, red lollipops, the methyl groups can be uh, reproduced reliably or they can be inhibited, uh, thereby allowing that DNA to be again turned on. This is called demethylation. And again, there's active demethylation and there's passive demethylation. Extremely important for us is that diet and lifestyle influence all of these processes, all of these types of DNA methylation.